What the f <coughs> Hold on. That worked? Marco Codes. Hi, Marco here. Let me show you seven great command line tools for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux that you might not yet know of. First up, a replacement for our good old friend ls. Look at that directory listing here. What instead you might want to do is install and call a tool called exa, exa-l. You can see that we still got a directory listing, only this time by default with a nice little color scheme. So for example, your static and templates folders are colored in blue. You've got different colors for different file types, MP4s, MDs, shaping, and whatnot. Your file attributes are also colored. But obviously there's a gazillion more options to it. What you could do is exa-l-t for tree dash dash git. Let's see what happens now. You still get a directory listing, but this time in a nice little pretty printed tree format, meaning also your subfolders are included here, static and templates. Not only that, you have git information available. What does that mean? Well, I just added my mp4 file, my md file, and my jpeg file for this video. They haven't yet been committed to the git repository, hence they have the new flag displayed here. In short, pretty cool. Check out exa. The next tool is for all my Windows homies out there who are still on cmd.exe, not PowerShell. In short, you want to install Clink, and then you're going to have it automatically available as soon as you open up a terminal window. And then you have, for example, hotkeys to change directories. You can also switch back into the user screencast directory by using context sensitive autocompletes. Or have a look at all the other commands I recently executed by going up and down. Or, for example, search for all the commands that I recently executed with the name Gradle inside. Right? Just a simple reverse search. In short, Clink gives you all the features you'd expect from a modern Linux slash macOS terminal. Up next is a tool called ripgrab, and you might have guessed correctly, it's a replacement for good old grab. By default, it searches for text inside your files, recursively starting from your current folder. So I could do a ripgrab hello, and then I would find a file called hello.txt with the content hello world, deploy HTML hello, index HTML hello. Obviously, there's a gazillion options when it comes to ripgrab. You could, you know, use regexes, you could just restrict by file type, for example, saying you only want to search in txt files, hello, and that should just give me back my hello txt file with the hello world string inside. But wait, there's more. There's a wrapper around ripgrab, which is called a ripgrab all. It uses ripgrab internally, a couple of other tools available on your machine to search for text inside PDF documents, Word documents, movie subtitles, and other crazy stuff. So if I do a ripgrab all text, for example, scroll up a tiny bit, I can see, well, I have my deploy HTML file, logout HTML file, index HTML file, all good. But down here is my sample PDF file, which has the word text inside it quite a couple of times. What's so cool about ripgrab is it's available on all platforms. So simply check it out. Up next, a somewhat boring tool to show off. Remember locate lets you find files on your system? Well, there's also plocate, which surprisingly lets you also find files on your system. So you can see there's a hello.txt file I got back, another hello.txt file, a couple of Python related files with the name hello inside. Why would you want to use plocate over locate? Because plocate is much faster, uses much less disk space. That's about it. Up next, a replacement for our good old friend, cat. Let's cat an XML file and we get, ooh, we get ugly white XML. What instead you might want to do is bat the same file. Bat palm XML and wow, we get colors, we get pretty printing, we get line numbers, automatic paging and much more for free. Bat understands a ton of different file types. Simply put, check it out. Up next, a tool called JQ, which comes in super handy if you want to work with JSON on the command line. Imagine I want to curl a GitHub API endpoint and essentially I get a long JSON response back, which is an array with a couple of objects inside. Now imagine I want to convert that JSON response to something else, to something much smaller. What I might want to do is I'm going to curl the endpoint again. Now I'm feeding the string into JQ and then I need to tell JQ what to do with that JSON string. Well, first of all, here I'm saying, out of that array, please only have a look at the very first object inside and then convert that object to a different JSON object with the key message, with the key name. 
and message should be from the first object, the commit.message property, name should be commit committer.name. And when you run that now, after a second, you don't get that huge JSON response back. Instead, you get your own custom JSON back. Super cool for bash scripts. Whenever you have to do something with JSON quickly on the command line, use JQ. Last but not least, the most inappropriately named tool called has it ever happened to you that you tried to do an apt install vim, for example, and you simply forgot the sudo? Obviously, you could just add the sudo or type f What now happens is that f has a look at the last command you entered, tries to autocorrect it, this time with sudo in place, shows you the suggestion, and you can simply hit enter, and off you go. Same with misspellings like git brunch, for example. Obviously, you could write git branch, but wouldn't you want to let some steam off by just going f and let it do all the work? That's all there is to it in a nutshell. All right, that's it. Now I want to know from you what cool command line tools you're using on a day-to-day -day basis, what cool tools I'm missing out on. Please do leave a reply down in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Sayonara.